Hello, I'm Jim O'Leary, and this is a presentation on open source GIS. Here is an outline of my presentation. I'll start by defining what GIS is. There are several GIS applications that many of us use on a regular basis, but we don't recognize them by the term GIS. Next, I'll discuss why GIS matters. GIS is becoming an important part of today's world. After having hopefully convinced you that you should be getting up to speed with GIS, I'll show you how you create GIS, that is, with newly arrived GIS software. This is the breakthrough part of the presentation, but I'll save the details until later. How do you learn about GIS? This is the next question, and by this point, I hope you will be interested enough to stick around to hear the answer. Finally, I'll give you an example of a typical GIS task. The term GIS is an acronym for Geographic Information Systems. A GIS is any information system that has a spatial or geographic component to it. As I stated earlier, many of us use a GIS without even being aware that it is actually a geographic information system. For example, if I want to go from 3100 Kingsway to 2500 East 49th Avenue, I would go to my favorite web map and put in the two addresses. The web map contains addresses and streets for locations all over the world. But if all that the web map did was store these items of data, it wouldn't be too useful. What makes the web map a GIS is that it can connect the streets and tell me the best way to get from one address to another. A GIS usually has a map, but it doesn't have to. Now, if I wanted to take the bus from 3100 Kingsway to 2500 East 49th Avenue, I would go to the government transportation website and put in my two addresses. This time, the website returns a sequence of locations, not a map. I don't have to see how to get from one address to the other. The bus driver knows how to do that. I just have to be at the bus stop on time. Truth in advertising, the government website also gives me a map as an option, but I don't need it to answer the question of how to get from one address to another. Where are you right now as you watch this video? You are somewhere on the earth, correct? When you finish watching this video, you will go somewhere else on the earth. Later, you will probably come back to this same spot on the earth. Do you get the hint as to why GIS is important? It has been said that up to 80% of information systems have or could have a geographic component. Adding that GIS component to our information systems helps us to understand our world better. For example, the City of Vancouver recently did a study to determine which areas of the city would flood if the sea level were to rise by a given measure. Understanding what may happen in such a situation allows city planners to take proactive action, perhaps constructing dikes or setting higher base elevation standards for new houses. The city of Calgary experienced a devastating flood in 2013. The cost of this flood was $5 billion, making it the costliest disaster in Canadian history. Following the flood, the government of Alberta commissioned a GIS study, and as a result, there are now 250 projects underway to prepare for future floods. The cost of these projects may be as much as half a billion dollars, but that is still cheap compared to the economic and social costs of a major flood. So governments and large organizations use GIS, but small organizations and individuals can use GIS as well. Recently, a friend of mine, who volunteers with a girls' softball league, gave me a list of addresses of the girls and asked me to put them on the map. Looking at the map, she could see which areas have a lot of girls, and more importantly, which areas have few or no girls. 
Having seen these areas on the map, she can now analyze why these areas do not have girls in the softball league and try to include these girls in the softball league as well. Sporting organizations, charity organizations, businesses and political parties can and are making use of GIS to help them make decisions. GIS is becoming big business. A recent study by Natural Resources Canada found that there are some 2,450 firms in the GIS field in Canada, and they contribute $2.3 billion to Canada's gross domestic product. That's a lot of businesses and a lot of jobs. GIS is one industry with its best days ahead of it as more and more uses for GIS come on stream. If you followed me so far, you are now convinced that GIS has a place in your future, right? So now, the next question is, how do you create GIS? This is the breakthrough section. Up until the present time, GIS software has been proprietary and expensive. The most widely used GIS software, ArcGIS, starts off with a rather high base price, but each module that you add costs more. Obviously, this kind of software is out of range for the individual or small business. My friend who wanted to see the softball league on a map would be out of luck. However, Recently, open source software has been released that is of high quality, multifaceted, and free. This software is called QGIS. QGIS is a game changer. It gives access to GIS to companies and individuals who could never afford proprietary GIS software. It performs most of the GIS functions that these proprietary GIS software packages do, and just as well. It also has a structure that allows third-party modules to plug in to QGIS, providing even more functions. QGIS can handle both vector and raster formats. In vector, QGIS can open a wide range of formats, including many that proprietary software cannot or choose not to. QGIS has no format to defend, thus it includes all formats. In raster, QGIS has a wide range of modules. For example, a distance raster shows the distance of each raster cell to a water fountain themed appropriately. QGIS is under active development with new releases every four months. QGIS has caught the attention of the world's great GIS developers and they are continuing to improve it. The United States Department of Labor sees the potential of QGIS to provide jobs and to make GIS accessible to whole new areas of the economy. They have funded Del Mar College in Texas to produce curriculum to help people learn QGIS and the GIS concepts on which QGIS is based. Over 2,000 GIS professionals contributed to a study to determine which skills a GIS professional would need. All of this study has gone into the development of the courses produced by Del Mar College. My colleague Rick Davidson and I have taken this basic QGIS curriculum and have built on it. We have added exercises and examples that are appropriate for a Western Canadian audience and have also fleshed out the curriculum. We have created the Open Source GIS Certificate Program comprised of five essential courses in GIS. We are also planning to add numerous optional courses in related GIS subjects taught by our GIS colleagues. The first session of Open Source GIS begins at Langara College in Vancouver in January 2016. Visit the Langara College Continuing Studies site for details. As well, visit giscourses.net for the latest information on GIS courses and related courses. I hope to see you in one of these courses or programs. Let's see QGIS at work in a typical GIS task. In this task, I want to identify parks in the city of Vancouver that have swimming pools. 
the parks are easy to find. I simply go to the Vancouver Open Data site and download the park polygons. Swimming pools are a little more challenging. There is no data set for swimming pools, so I have to copy each pool's address into a spreadsheet. Once I have the addresses, I use QGIS Geocoder to apply latitude and longitude to each address. Looking at the swimming pools and the parks on the map, however, I see that some of the pools are not actually within a park. My next task is to buffer the parks by a reasonable number of meters. When I say reasonable, this is an example that in GIS, as in horseshoes, close is usually good enough. I want to find pools that could reasonably be said to be part of a park. Now that I have my buffered parks, I can use the GIS function join attribute by location. This will select only swimming pools that are in the buffered parks along with a park name and ID. I save these selections as a new layer. I've now got my swimming pools in my QGIS map, but I want to share this map on a web page. I invoke the QGIS to leaf third-party module. This module not only puts the swimming pools into a web map, it also allows me to use custom swimmer icons and custom text for the pop-up. As a bonus, it allows me to cluster the parks when I zoom out. A little CSS copy and paste later, and I have my web map of swimming pools in parks in the city of Vancouver. Go see the result at http giscourses.net examples QGIS to leaf. All of this is free software. Many people take a GIS course in school or college using proprietary software, but when the course ends, they do not have access to that software and they never develop their GIS skills. QGIS solves that problem. As you work with QGIS, your understanding grows and it becomes easier to solve spatial problems. You get better and so does your organization. QGIS gives the individual and small company the opportunity to do GIS for themselves without the impossible cost of proprietary GIS software. My colleague Rick Davidson and I hope that the open source GIS certificate program will equip students for entry into the new frontier that GIS is entering. A frontier where GIS tools are available to all and there is no limit to what we can do with them.